Hey everybody, what's going on? It's James here with Crypto Common Sense. Wanted to sit down and shoot a fast market update video for you on Bitcoin and also other cryptocurrencies as well. I also want to give you a heads up on something I'm working on with a former student. Before I jump into the content, please do me a huge favor, hit that thumbs up button, make sure you subscribe to the channel if you have not already. And of course, do not forget to check the description for or a link where you can join the Patreon for just $7 a month. And there's going to be a second link today with another offer. All right, so here's what's happened, guys. A long story short, uh, there's actually a guy that uh, joined one of my trading courses a few years ago, became a very, very successful trader. He was, already had some trading experience before, but he hadn't been able to make a go of it full time. He joined the courses, it filled in some blanks, and he took that and ran with it. Uh, one of the first things he did that impressed me was he became a market maker for FTX, was actually trading about 39 million, 40 million a month. And then he figured out some really cool strategies last year that we used to make a lot of money we taught it to a group of students they use it to do very well and then this year he got really big into this DeFi stuff just literally last maybe three or four weeks right he's really been diving into the DeFi stuff he brought it to me showed it to me long story short blew me away i had not looked at DeFi. i didn't know anything about DeFi. I'm kind of a he told me i'm a boomer uh right so Long story short, if you guys have never heard of these things, these pancake swaps and stuff, people are using uh, BNB to trade these, I, I think they're Ponzi schemes, guys, to be totally honest with you, right? A lot of them launch, they go up thousands of percent, and they drop to zero. But we're not investing in them. What we're doing is trading in them. And so, for example, today, uh, he was able to put in two BNB on one of these things, and he cashed out um, 20 grand, right? The equivalent of 20,000 US dollars in one day, right? Off of two BNB, so literally about a $680 you know, trade, boom, $20,000 profit. Another guy uh, was able to put in five BNB on the same token and it got as high as 100 and I think it was 122 BNB, it might have been 144. I think it was 122 BNB. So he was up like 40 grand or something. Unfortunately, he made the mistake of going to bed and it crashed while he was sleeping, so I don't know what it's at now. But yeah, the opportunity in this DeFi stuff, by far the craziest, biggest opportunity I've ever seen. So uh, this guy did put together a course and I did partner with him on it, um, teaching some of my trading stuff in there and then having him teach the DeFi stuff. So the course is called Pancake Profits and I'm not gonna go and do a big pitch in this video for it. I will leave a link down in the description. You can check it out in your free time if you'd like. Um, it's just, a, it'll take you over to a page and give you more details about it, okay? again. Seeing some really crazy results, really crazy stuff. I do not expect it to last. I'm thinking maybe a year max uh, before it calms down, maybe even six months, right? Uh, I, I view it kind of as one of those things where I'm gonna make hay while the sun shines, but I'm not gonna plan on do it, doing it for five years or anything. So definitely check that out. As far as Bitcoin goes, well, guys, I haven't shot an update video on Bitcoin in several days, maybe even a week now, because the reality is there's nothing really to talk about, right? Bitcoin is still in a bear market. Again, I know people want to, you know, they don't want to believe that. No, James, it's not a bear market. Guys, it is a bear market. I'm not trying to be mean. I'm not trying to, you know, piss in your Wheaties. It can turn around. It can change back to a bull market. That's certainly a possibility, but it is a bear market. Bear markets are, you know, indicated by 20% decreases in price and negative market sentiment. I can't even talk this morning. Negative market sentiment, okay? So essentially, we've had about a 50% decrease in Bitcoin's price, and we're seeing a lot of negativity for example, uh, with the you know impact on the environment and stuff like that. So it is a bear market, okay? As far as me, what am I waiting for? Well, I'm still waiting for the same thing I've been waiting for and talking about now for about three weeks. I'm still waiting for this to get some type of bounce up to retest this old zone of supply between $45,000 and $49,000. There is no guarantee that it gets there, okay? No guarantee at all. Uh, so what I'm watching to kind of give me an indication of when to change what I'm looking for is I'm watching this very basic symmetrical triangle, okay? If this thing breaks north, I'm gonna expect it to go up to about 45 to 49K. If it breaks south, I'm gonna expect it to go much, much lower, probably all the way down to around 20K, okay? That's what I'm looking at. I'm just waiting for this to break. I don't have a crystal ball. I don't know which way it'll break, but when it breaks, that's the trade I'm looking for. I'm hoping that we are still in this zone and that we are going to get a complacency bounce but there's no guarantee that we haven't already had it. Entirely possible this was the complacency bounce. Entirely possible that all this is actually all this anxiety. If you looked at a wick off sheet, which of course you guys know that I do a little bit of wick off, I'm not a 
huge wick off guy, but I do a little bit of wick off stuff. I use it to predict uh, the top at 62K. Also use it to predict a couple of earlier tops that didn't happen, so not patting myself on the back too much. Uh, but this did look like a UTAD, and then, then this uh, this did look like a retest of supply before the drop. Uh, if this is falling wick off, then we will not get a bounce up to this level. This is literally what we'll get is consolidation before we enter the final phase of, of distribution and head back down um, you know, to lower levels. So I will just watch this and see what happens. My bias at the moment is macro bear, but shorter time frames, it's actually bullish because I really do feel like uh, this is going to pump up and probably wash out bears and trap longs. I feel like they're going to push this up, get people to funnel back in, and then and then dump it on them. Okay, so we'll see. But there's not a whole lot to talk about with Bitcoin. It's still sitting in this you know, same zone until it breaks out. It's it's kind of like watching paint dry in the larger time frames. Now there's lots of activity on the smaller time frames, and that's always the case, right? This saying about not you know fighting the trend. That's true. You know, if you're in a downtrend, you don't want to take position trades and try to ride them up. But what I will say is the fighting the trend stuff, it matters more for where you exit a trade than where you enter a trade, right? So for example, if you enter back here at 30K, well, that wasn't a bad play, right? You can certainly enter back there, you know, sell for 30, 40%, whatever this balance was. The reason it matters, you know, that you know whether you're in a downtrend or an uptrend is because if you're in an uptrend and you buy the dip, well, then you look to ride to the next higher high, right? Stairs, boom. But if you're in a downtrend, then the dip is not a dip, it's a falling knife. And when you buy down here, you're typically gonna get some type of bounce and you wanna be selling that bounce before more downside. That's why it matters, whether you're you know, in an uptrend or a downtrend. The entry itself is not that important. It's really more about the exit, okay? So that's kind of Bitcoin and that's what I'm watching. Uh, if we went and looked at a three-day chart, which I don't have it pulled up in this window, I did bounce right off the bottom of my bear market box. If you're not sure what that is, if you're new to the channel, go back and watch the last video or any video for that matter for the last few years. I've talked about it over and over and over again. Um, it has helped for support so far. So that's kind of what I'm seeing on Bitcoin. What I want to talk about a little bit today was BNB. And I'm just using BNB as an example because I've started looking at it a lot recently because this pancake swap, it uses BNB to do the trading. So of course I care about the value of BNB because I'm holding BNB to trade with. Uh, but it made a really great example. Whoops, I don't want that line on there. It made a really great example of how markets really just move between supply and demand. Okay, that's what they do. And so just because a market is in a downtrend doesn't mean you can't long it. And just because a market's in an uptrend doesn't mean you can't short it, etc. But if you look at BNB, this is a one day chart for BNB. Right? If you look back here, it had this big you know, parabolic move up, it had this pullback, and then obviously it showed strength by moving higher. So what we could do back here is we could draw this box and basically say, hey, this is our demand. And we know it's demand because this is where buyers were stepping up saying, hey, I wanna own BNB at these levels. And if you look, go down to the bottom of this tail, and then the top of the box, I like to draw them at the bottom of the, the lowest close, so we get a box that looks like this. Now watch what happens when this thing fell. I don't know what it fell, 60, 70%, something like that. Let's see. Oh gosh, yeah, right at 69.4%. Uh, but where did it stop? Right at the top. I mean, right at the top of that box. So just because this broke through you know, support and everything, and obviously it's in a downtrend now, does that mean this will be a bad place, a long BNB? I don't think so. Right? I think anybody in their right mind, especially with the Bower of Hindsight, would say that was an obvious place to go long. And you could zoom in and get an even better entry, but just assuming that you're trading pure daily charts and not zooming in, look at this. I mean, this isn't hard. You go long in the close of this candle, put some volume on there, should see a spike, yeah. So you got a spike in volume. And guys, this is one thing that drives me nuts about trading, okay? Most people who teach trading, they're not successful traders. And that's that's how it is in a lot of niches too, right? Uh, once upon a time, I owned an affiliate network. If you don't know what that is, don't worry about it. We basically processed payments for people and stuff. And we operated in the make money online niche. So most of our vendors were selling make money online products. 
but most of our vendors have never actually made money online other than by selling how to make money online products. It was like the biggest, scuzziest niche I've ever been involved in, right? I'll never forget this guy doing a launch on our platform and, you know, asking me for advice and he was really panicked and I was like, you know, are you okay? And he's like, well, he's like, my house is in foreclosure right now and uh, this launch doesn't go well, we're gonna be homeless. This guy was teaching other people how to make money on the internet but he wasn't actually making any money on the internet. He was just basically scraping by selling these products on how to make money. And I think that's how trading is for a lot. So you get people who, they take some basic concepts with trading, they don't make any money with it. And they decide, hey, I'm gonna go put together a course and I'll just make money selling this shit uh, to unsuspecting newbies. So for example, one of the things that I'd heard over and over and over again was high selling volume is bearish and high buying volume is bullish. And that will get you in a lot of trouble if you follow that. One of the only guys that I've ever paid for training when it comes to trading, um, and I wasn't a huge fan of his stuff, it just didn't really resonate with me, but I have massive respect for the guy and he is a very successful trader. One of the things that he used to say all the time was location, location, location. You know, a setup is only a setup, but it, it's gotta be in the right location. So for example, you know, when you talk about like rising volume and high selling volume, if this high selling volume was at the beginning of this move, that is very bearish. That's likely to kick off a move down. But when you get really high selling volume after a big move down, it's actually bullish because what it means is people are capitulating, right? People are getting stopped out. People are getting liquidated. People are giving up saying, screw it, I want out. And when enough people have capitulated or got out, that's when the market's gonna turn around. You guys heard me talk about this you know, a lot last year about capitulation tails and capitulation candles. And that's kind of, this is one of the signs. So this first one, this looks like a capitulation candle. You've got a, a big tail on the bottom of it. You've got this big selling volume, but it's not really in a place where there's a lot of demand. It's not like back here in our demand zone, right? You could have longed it, right? And you probably could have even got out and made some money on it but it's not enough for me personally. But when you have these multiple candles in a row and you're seeing all the selling volume come in and then you get a tail right on top of demand like this, that's a trade that I'm more likely to take. Okay, I didn't take this trade. I wasn't trading BNB at the time. I don't know if I would've taken it or not. It's always easy to say in hindsight, well, yeah, it's you know, an obvious trade, but I'm saying, excuse me, I had the hiccups. What I'm saying is this is the type of trade you can look for on a one minute chart, two minute chart, five minute chart, you know, hour chart, etc. So the trade would look like this, right? Enter there, stop at the bottom of the tail, at least two to one, boom, right? Does it matter that you're in a downtrend? No, it doesn't matter because you're not trying to ride this up. You're just trying to play the bounce and there you have it, right? Same thing over here. If you draw this box, right here's your tail. So this is our demand. Bounces right off of it right here. Now, you probably would have got stopped out if you longed that, but that's just the way trading goes. You're not gonna win every trade. But look what happens when it breaks through. It breaks through our zone of demand, support, becomes resistance or supply. We bounce back up, and now you have an obvious short position right there. Stop at the top of the wick. There's your two to one. Boom, there's your short, right? Just bouncing around these levels. Comes back up here and looks what happens. Comes back up to supply again, and boom, another short position. This green candle, it's too strong of a candle for me personally. I would not have shorted that. This red candle, maybe I would have shorted that. This red candle here, that's the one that I would have been most likely to short of these three candles, right? Because this candle here says, look, bears have pushed it down. Bulls have tried to push it back up. And let me let me break this down further. Why not this one? Watch, guys. This is a W. And this is that W's neckline. So when you break above the neckline, most often you're going to retest it and then go up. Okay? That's why not this one. That's why not here. But when you get a second red candle like this, okay, what it says is the bulls tried. They tried to push it up off this W. They failed and it came right back down. So that's the reason that I would consider going short on a candle like this with a stop right back at this green candle's top. Not the red one, but all the way back at the green candle. 11% stop, 22% profit target, 
and it has not hit it yet, right? So I would still be in that trade, okay? Another way that some traders will trade that is they'll be a little bit more conservative. They'll wait for it to actually break that level. So for example, right here, come back up and retest it, and then they'll look for some type of topping candle, okay? So for example, this here, it's not really a topping candle. This here could easily just continue on through that. It's a pretty full body candle. So I would not short this candle. I'd be much more inclined to short this one, okay? But again, we're talking about all this. This is a daily chart. We don't care about this trend, okay? Because we're not looking to hold these trades long term. And this gets even more powerful when you zoom in, okay? So let's, let's look at it like a, I don't know, let's look at a five minute chart, okay? I'm actually gonna turn volume off for just a minute because it's kind of messy uh, in the video. So let's just take a look here, up here. See it, this is a double top. See how clean this is, boom, boom, boom. What happens with the double top? You gotta retest the neckline, most often a move down, okay? See it? Watch. So there's our old support. See right here, this was our high back here. Came up, retested it right there, perfect. Boom, moved off of it. All right, so there is our demand, right? So right here's your long. I don't know what you would have made on that long if you played it. Looks like a couple of percent maybe. Yeah, a couple of percent up. Comes down, breaks through it. Here's your retest, right? It's a red candle right here. So there's your short position. Put your stop, depending on how aggressive you are, you could put it on top of that wick. 0.32% is a pretty small stop. Maybe back here for half percent or maybe a little bit more conservative back here around 1.3%. Just take a little bit smaller position since it's a little larger stop. And then pull that down for at least two to one. There's your trade. And then if you do a good job of managing that trade, you have the potential to write it down for over six to one. Does it matter what the trend is? At, on the larger time frame? Not at all, right? Not at all. Look down here. So this is just chop, right? Just chop it around, chop it around. Really no setups in here. It's just chop, chop, chop. Finally breaks out of the chop. So here's your big candles. Probably going to see some big green volume down here. I don't know, but let's look. There it is. What's the big green volume tell us? Well, big green volume breaking through resistance tells me that it wants to go higher. So if I draw a horizontal ray at the top here, right? I'm drawing all the way back here. Resistance, 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 also known as supply. Breaks above it, comes down for the retest, actually fails, goes right back through it, right? So there's still no long here. No short either, no long, just waiting. Comes back above it. Here's your retest that actually succeeded and here's your long position. So right here, long, stop, two to one. There's your trade. This is a five minute chart. So this trade would have taken, entered here, five, 10, 15, 20, 25 minutes, done. Right? Same thing, just moving over and over again. Just same thing. Watching for the market to consolidate and then waiting for the market to pick a direction and playing that direction. Now I'm showing you this on a five minute chart, but guys, let's go back over to Bitcoin. Let's go to the daily chart. It is no different playing daily chart. It's moved down, now it's consolidating. All I need to do is wait for a breakout with volume confirmation, and that's the direction the market is most likely to go. Does it work 100% of the time? No, it doesn't. That's why stop losses are so important, guys. You've gotta use a stop loss. There's one thing about bull markets, especially parabolic bull markets, they create really, really bad habits where you think it's okay not to use a stop because maybe you're long and it goes down 10, 20, 30, 40, 50%, but every time it always comes back higher and you're like, it doesn't matter, I'll just wait. Well, what happens is when the market flips bare, it doesn't come back. It just keeps going down, right? And this is why most people end up giving back all the money they make plus additional money on top of it. And I'm no exception to that rule. My first two years of trading, it's literally what happened. I made a bunch of money, a ton of money, and then I gave all of it back because 
I had been using stops in the bull market. I got tired of getting stopped out and then watching the stock or the, the crypto do what I thought it was going to do. So I just decided, well, I won't use stops anymore. I'll use quote unquote mental stops, which is the biggest joke ever. There's no such thing, right? You're not going to execute it. You're going to say this is where you're going to close it, but you won't close it there. You'll, you'll say, no, I'll give it a little more room, a little more room, a little more room. And then the next thing you know, you're down 50, 60, 70%, and now it's too late to sell and you don't know what to do, right? And then it finally bounces and you're like, okay, well, I'll hold it because maybe, maybe this is it, maybe the bottom is in. And then of course it's a lower high and it goes down even further. And before you know it, you've held an investment down 95%. Not even an investment, a trade. A trade that you planned on being in for a few days, now you're in it for a year and you're down 95%. And if that story sounds familiar to you, you're like, man, he's talking about me. I'm not, I'm talking about me. I'm talking about every new trader because we all do it, right? Well, 95% of people, this is what they do. And only after they lose a shitload of money, do they either stop trading and say, this isn't for me, or they learn their lesson and say, that's never gonna happen again. I'm gonna use a stop on every trade I take, right? One of those two things happen. People either leave the market or they learn from it and get better. I chose to learn from it, but it's a lesson that I would like to try to help other people avoid. Anyway, uh, this video got a little bit more onto trading strategy and trading you know, um, tutorials than actual Bitcoin, but again, there's not a lot to say for Bitcoin. We have to wait for it to break out of the range. Anybody that tells you they know what's gonna happen, a hey, more power to them, they're uh, living in delusional land, right? Nobody knows what's gonna happen. It's gonna break out and it's gonna pick a direction and only after it picks a direction can we really say this is what's most likely gonna you know, go down. Yeah, long-term, we can make predictions. We can say that it's probably gonna go back down to this level. Why? Because this was the last level of major resistance this is where the majority of support is. And if we put it on a volume profile, not that one because that doesn't go back far enough. This one, there's our point of control down around 9,500 bucks. Will Bitcoin go back to 10K? I would say 90% chance it goes to 10K within the next year. But do I want to short $35,000 Bitcoin? No. I want to short... $49,000 Bitcoin or $45,000 Bitcoin and then write that down, right? Because if you get short here and it breaks north, you're going to get stopped out. You're not going to sit there in that short and just hope and pray that it goes down. That's stupid, right? Because there's no guarantee it goes does go down. It could break up, look bearish. Some big ass news could break, whatever it is. U.S. adopts crypto, Bitcoin, whatever, who knows? And you can wake up one day and find out Bitcoin went up 20 grand in a day. Now what are you going to do? Now you're short without a stop and you've just lost all of your money. Okay? We don't short just because we think we're in a downtrend. We don't long just because we're in a bull market. Okay? So started to ramble there a bit at the end. I'm going to go ahead and chop it out and, and do my best to kind of splice this back together. Bottom line is, guys, I'm waiting to see what Bitcoin does. I'm not in a big hurry. When it picks a direction, then I'll be happy to jump on uh, with the winning side, whether that's the bulls or whether that's the bears. I want to leave you guys with this, you know, impression or this idea that you don't have to wait for this if you're trading smaller time frames, right? This is bigger time frame stuff. If you're day trading or swing trading, you can take those day trades, you can take those swing trades. It doesn't matter. There's plenty of chop, there's plenty plenty of volatility especially on altcoins, okay? Bitcoin has a little bit less meat on the bone, but if you go over to some of these altcoins like the major altcoins especially, uh, there's a lot of volatility and if you get over into like the pancake swap stuff uh, the volatility will absolutely blow you away okay all that being said please remember i am just some guy sitting in a spare bedroom which means that nothing in this video is financial advice you should always go out there and do your own due diligence and seek out professional financial advice from a licensed financial advisor before making any type of investment in cryptocurrency the stock market or precious metals. If you enjoyed this video, be sure and give it a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and make sure you check the description for a link where you can join the Patreon and also a link where you can learn more about my former students uh, course when it comes to DeFi and more specifically trading on pancake swaps. All right, this is James with Crypto Common Sense reminding you to please trade safe.